Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Games Hitacom video, we're going to be discussing both the stepping of Ryzen as well as the clock speed, and then we're going to further elaborate on the graphics driver and optimization of the Vega architecture, which was being used to demo Doom and a few other games during, well, CES 2017. Now, talking of CES 2017, are we not entertained? Seriously, it's one of the best CESs in some time. It's not to say that last year's was crap, it just wasn't really that interesting compared to this. I mean, this year has just been absolutely ridiculous. So, with that in mind, I will have a full kind of CES breakdown with all of the news from both NVIDIA, AMD, and all of the other companies at the end of this, especially an analysis of what we've learned about all of the different CPU and GPU stuff from AMD. But at the moment, I want to keep things pretty brief, which is a challenge for me, quite frankly, because brevity has not been one of my strong points, as you probably are aware. Um, simply because there's so much information coming out so often. Anywho, he says, let's talk about clock speeds of Ryzen as well as revisions. So this information comes to us from a couple of different sources, the first being Canard PC, and the second one being HardwareLux.de. So, essentially speaking, it reveals the clock speed and the stepping. The Ryzen demo was using an F3 stepping, which was clocked at both 3.6 GHz and a 3.9 GHz, but wait, there's more. Yes, I am trying to act like a used, a used car, car salesman. Jesus, I can't speak suddenly. Now, from the images which have popped up, it would appear that the base clock of Ryzen is 3.6 GHz, and on top of that, we can also see the stepping and the turbo... Um, in the device manager, which means that the rather hefty code name for the device ends in 39 slash 36 underscore N, which is signifying both the uh, turbo and the base clock respectively. And the stepping here is uh, F3. Now, these are engineering samples. I want to clarify this because uh, the individuals over Canard PC have revealed that Ryzen has already reached F4 stepping, which is actually a slight increase. The turbo of this is 4 gigahertz. Now, I just want to put this into some level of perspective, because remember the i7-6900K? It currently can turbo up to 3.7 gigahertz. Uh, well, I say currently, it is 3.7 gigahertz. It's not like Intel are going to increase the clock speed suddenly on a release processor, let's just be honest. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the Ryzen 8-core processor, in theory, will pretty much decimate the 6900K in single-thread performance with a couple of caveats. The first caveat, and the most obvious, is which version of the Ryzen CPU is it? Now, obviously, it's the 8-core, but once again, there is a rumor going around that there are going to be two versions of Ryzen 8-core. I'm just going to call it SR7 because that's the rumoured code name for it. So I'm just going to, for this video, say SR7 when referring to the 8-core because it's just simpler. So supposedly there are going to be two versions of SR7. One, which has higher clock speed and higher overclocking potential, while the latter has less overclocking potential and lower base and turbo speeds out of the gate. Now, how much of a difference, A, that makes in reality? For example, it could be that that means that the turbo of the, let's say, the lower-end SR7, that might be 3.7 gigahertz, or it could be 3.6 gigahertz for turbo, whereas this could turbo up to 4 gigahertz. We just don't know. And the second issue is pricing, which is obviously the fawn in any product launches side. What this does, however, at least somewhat show is that for folks who have the money to buy whatever version of Summit Ridge this is, it's going to be very competitive. I mean, considering that the overclock of something along the lines of a 6700K or let's say a 7700K, yeah, you can get like 4.5 to 4.7-ish gigahertz, obviously depending on cooling, obviously depending on silicon lottery, obviously depending on, you know, how much 
you really want to overclock it and tweak it but let's just for the sake of this video say that a lot of 6700k's are pretty capable of 4.5 and honestly 4.5 uh, gigahertz isn't particularly difficult for a 7700k one can make a very compelling argument that even if you're only able to get Ryzen up to 4. let's let's be quite conservative and say 4.3 gigahertz 4.4 gigahertz that's very very good news and in theory it will mean that even if these cpus are like five or ten percent slower than the 7700k if you take overclocking to account on a single thread basis the fact that you've got those additional cores is going to be very interesting the only small chink in the armor of summit ridge could be certain avx um, pathways i don't want to go super into that but basically the way the architecture of Summit Ridge, or rather Ryzen, works is that it can only execute a certain number of those per clock, which might actually be slightly slower than uh, KB Lake, but we don't know that for certain. That's why I don't want to report it as like it's it's a definite. And the second issue with Ryzen is quite honestly, we don't have anything other than controlled benchmarks. Yes, Canard PC did some benchmarking, but it still wasn't really in their lab. And it was a very old version of Ryzen, uh, supposedly. I can't remember which Silicon revision it was. I think it was A A zero or maybe F one or something like that. It was really old, and basically it had some issues with the Silicon, which meant it had memory cache controller issues, as well as I believe it had some problems with um, some of the logic as well, which essentially meant the clocks, uh, sorry, the performance kind of tanked a little bit. Okay, I spent way longer on that than what I assumed, but let's continue. And I guess the most logical thing for us to begin with is, uh, well, rather, continue with, is Vega. Now, I just want to point out this is quite a small piece of news, but I figured I'd put it out anyway. According to hardware Lux.de, um, they have said without possible optimizations on the graphics card drivers. From what I've seen, AMD have said it's an internal graphics card driver that they're using. Um, uh, basically, it's one that they're still tweaking. And they have confirmed the official numbers AMD have put out in their video that once again, using Vulkan and a resolution of 4K with the Ultra preset selected, they have managed to hit the 60 FPS range quite comfortably. Now, obviously, I say range because during the gameplay, it will go up and down from 60 to, say, 70 or perhaps even uh, mid-70s and then obviously go down a little bit if a hell of a lot of stuff happens on screen. But overall, I'm pretty darn impressed with what we're seeing so far with this particular graphics card. Although, we all, we've all learned by now that it's a different architecture, which I think most of us kind of assumed at this point anyway. It wasn't just Polaris, because as I said multiple times, it's like, if it was just Polaris, it's not that difficult for them just to say, well, gee, let's just increase the number of compute units and add in a HBM uh, memory controller as well as the requisite other components. And I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm not saying that you don't need to do like some level of engineering. I'm just saying that it's not like it would take this long to release the product compared to an entire new architecture. So I'm guessing they've basically had Polaris as kind of like, I, I'm making this as an assumption, by the way, I don't know this, but I'm going to assume that they were basically using as Polaris as kind of like a, um, I guess as an intermediary where they put in some of the optimizations, for example, the FP16 stuff and the real revision, which was a lot of the um, virtual memory stuff that I've talked about and other bits and bobs. That was still to come, and that's what they put into Vega. And I'm, of course, left with a whole bunch of questions like what's going to happen with the trickle-down, and also what is going to be the clock speed for the lower-end Ryzen processors. For example, there is a hell of a lot of folks who are very interested in the X370 with the SR7 high-end. Yes, I'm getting a lot of messages with that. But I'm also getting a lot of messages and a lot of comments that are saying, well, you know what, I don't actually want that. I just don't want to be stuck with the choice between a 7700K or, well, you know, nothing. Or a 6700K or whatever you've got. 
I would like to just buy a cheaper four core solution from AMD which has eight threads and that's enough for me because right now all I do is game and they might want to pair that with let's say a B350 motherboard especially if overclocking is not super duper duper in their mind and they just want like a basic overclock. I could certainly see the appeal of that type of thing. And obviously that means what is the clock speed and what is the pricing of that CPU in comparison to Intel. And I guess the last question is, let's say for the sake of this video, Intel are undercut by AMD, but let's say 50 to to $100 for the 4-core or whatever solution. Or let's say that AMD go absolutely crazy and release SR7 at like 400 bucks. What happens to the 7700K and other processors in uh, Intel's lineup? Are they going to start cutting those prices to remain competitive? Are they just going to say, screw it, our marketing slash branding will get us over and we'll just last until uh, until Coffee Lake with the six core mainstream uh, CPU cores? Well, I guess we'll have to just watch this space. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.